Hello, my PPC family and friends. Pastor Brian here with another quick bite, living the word. Today, our word is going to come from uh, John chapter 3 and uh, the story of Nicodemus. You're familiar with it when Nicodemus comes to the Lord by night to inquire of him uh, how he must be saved and things of this nature. Uh, but why this stood out to me or what made me think of this passage this morning in particular is it's a pretty uh, blustery day outside today here. Uh, it's uh, pretty windy. Uh, wind's been pretty powerful all night long, actually. And so I just, as I think about the wind, I thought about this passage and I thought about how appropriate it is for us and a lot of the things we've been discussing lately, uh, be it in our services or be it uh, here on the Quick Bites about our lives and what they represent and stuff like this. And the Lord brought this passage back to mind thinking about the wind. So if you turn to John chapter 3 with me, uh, we'll just go ahead and pick it up if you would. Uh, verse uh, 3, we know uh, kind of what's going on here, right? Actually, we'll pick, up, pick it up at verse 4. And it says, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now, here's the point. Basically, Jesus said, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We understand that. And now he can say, well, how can he be born again? And Jesus goes on to answer. And he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, and except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Now, I want to pause here for one second because this is so vital. Understand that you must be born of the flesh and of the spirit to see the kingdom of God. And here's the point. Um, that was born of the flesh is flesh. That was born of the spirit, uh, spirit of spirit. You must be born again to see the kingdom of God. Well, how do you become born again? Born again is not by the flesh. And what I mean by that is this. Growing up in a home, of a believing home, growing up with, a, uh, with, with, with uh, spiritual parents, growing up, going to church, growing up in situations like this does not save you. What saves you is when you come to the saving knowledge by the Spirit of God in Jesus Christ through His death, burial, and resurrection and nothing else. No, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to perform a certain way. You don't have works that you have to do. You don't have to do any of those things to be saved. That's going to lead into our next part here, but I just want to make that point clear before we move on. All right? That to be born again, you receive the Spirit of God. And you receive the Spirit of God when you put your faith in in Jesus Christ, in Him alone, through His death, burial, and resurrection, and nothing else for your salvation. No work you must do, nothing like that. Only in Jesus Christ. That's that born again that He's speaking about here. But then He goes on and adds a thought. And it's not to add to the salvation, but it's to kind of, kind of drive the point home with uh, Nicodemus here. He says, verse 7, um, Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth. In other words, it's going to blow wherever it wants, right? And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Here's the point. The wind blows. Now, we, we can't see the wind. We don't necessarily know exactly where the forces of the wind are coming from. Oh, we can look at our meteorologists and say, well, these, this cold front and this warm front are coming together and we're going to have windy weather because of that. Yeah, you know, they might know why things are happening, but they don't know exactly where it's happening. They don't know where it's coming from. And they don't know who's controlling those things. We do, of course. But all that to say this, what is he really driving at? The point is, you can't see the wind, but you can certainly see the effects of the wind. So when we become born again, we, may, we can't see whether or not someone is saved. We can't. I can't tell you anyone 100% is saved aside from myself. I know whom I have believed in. I know who I've trusted in. But you can see the effects of the wind. You can see the effects of the Spirit of God. When someone has yielded themselves to the Spirit of God, when someone is walking with the Lord Jesus Christ, when somebody has been redeemed and the Spirit of God now resides in them, they've been born of the flesh and of the Spirit, you can see the effects of those things. The effects of those things are going to bring about a peace that they may have, a joy. It's going to bring about all those, the, 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 uh, when we read about the, the uh, fruits of the Spirit in and, and the book of uh, Galatians, it's going to bring about all those things. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, right? Humbleness. They're not going to be these arrogant uh, walking around. I mean, and so sometimes you have to go, you see these guys who are so spiritually proud, you got to go, maybe 
they're dependent upon their flesh and not dependent upon the Spirit of God. Maybe they're walking in their flesh and they've never received the Spirit of God. I mean, I'm just being honest here, right? Guys, We, I mean, honestly, if we're going to look at the effects of the Spirit of God, we're going to look at what the fruit of the Spirit is, and we're going to need to hold ourselves up to that standard and go, is this who we really are? Are we these kind of people? Because we should, just like we can see dust in the wind, just like we can see a flag blowing, just like we can see a cell moving across the ocean, just like we can hear the bells chiming if we have wind chimes outside, just like, I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, we see the tumbleweeds, just like we can see the effects of the wind, so should we be able to see the effects of the Spirit of God in the lives of his children, those who have been born again. Not necessarily in a perfect manner. And it doesn't mean we have to understand it entirely. I don't understand the wind entirely. I understand the effects of the wind. So, my challenge for us today, my thought for us today is very simple. Let the Spirit of God reign in your life, that they may see the effects of the Spirit of God in you. Why? That thereby some might be saved. I love you. We love you. God loves you. And God's got this.